Okay, functions involving E. Um, from this point on in your life, E is a number, not a letter. Um, the number E is called Euler's number. It's not pronounced Euler, it's pronounced Euler. Um, it's an irrational number. E is like pi. It goes on forever. Okay, it's 2.71, and then a mess of numbers after it forever. Um, it is also called the natural base. All right, that'll become more apparent when we get into logarithms. For right now, you just need to know that it's called the natural base. All right, um, so, so before, you learned, uh, we talked about an equation that was similar to this. Um, it, it was the compound interest formula, uh, and like I said, it looked a lot like this thing. If we take that formula and simplify it a little bit so that it looks like this, 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x, and we graph it, uh, a couple neat things um, happen. The first one is, if we look at, I'm not sure if I can get the zoom uh, oh, I want to do this. Menu, view, no. Do you have your TN Inspire plugged in? Uh, no, this is, this, like is, this is on my computer. So if we zoom in here, look at the, uh, look at what happens to the graph. It oscillates back and forth an uh, infinite number of times in between <laughs> here and here. But that's not really what we care about. What we really care about is what happens as X gets really, really big. Okay, so if we look at... As x gets really, really big, in fact, I think we can zoom out, notice that the graph gets really, really close to a certain value. This value, the blue line here, is the number e. As you can kind of see here, that's the function, is the value e. It's like, like I said, it's 2.71, whatever. These are each half, half notches, so 1, 2, a little bit more than 2.5. This is the function e. So as we graph this thing, and we take x through infinity, it approaches the number e. Yeah, so e is the asymptote? You would say e is the asymptote. Very good. Guys, remember that e is an irrational, irrational number. So if you approximate it, if you turn it into a decimal, that's not the exact value. So if I take e squared times e to the fifth, and I put that into my calculator and get a decimal, that's not the exact value. So if the question asks either simplify or what is the exact value, then you're going to have to use your exponent rules from way back at the beginning of the trimester to simplify these things. Yeah, when I multiply powers at the same base, I add the exponents, all right? So I'm going to add, this is going to equal, uh-oh, that's the eraser. E, guys, 2 plus 5, which is e to the 7. And that's as simplified as you can go, e to the 7. Next one, when we divide, we're going to take 12 divided by 3 first. 12 over 3 is 4. Okay, And then e to the 4 divided by e to the 3, that means we're going to subtract the exponents. So we're going to get e to the 4 minus 3, which is just e to the 1. So we could say, hey, that thing is just 4 times e. This next one, we have to be really careful because we have a power to a power. So when I rewrite this for my first step, I'm going to make this... The 2 has to be applied to the 5, and it has to be applied to the e to the negative 3x. So this is going to change to 5 squared times e to the negative 3x squared. Okay? Any questions on... It's going to be 5 squared, which is 25. And then e to the negative 3x raised to the second. Well, these two things up here are going to be multiplied. So 2 times negative 3x, that's e to the negative 6x, right? Power to a power, we multiply. If you want to evaluate these in using a calculator, I can show you two ways. One way is just to type this in your calculator. e caret 4. e raised to the fourth power. The e button is located near the division button. Okay, So if you push second and then the division button, that gives you the number e. There's another way to do it, but this will always work, um, and I'll show you both ways here in a second. Yes, I stole this from the book. I would take a second to jot down some important stuff. This is not terribly important for our purposes, and neither is this. Uh, but this formula right here I'll rewrite for you is y equals a times e to the rx, okay? and that is the, um, the natural base function, or the basic natural base function. Um, the really important things um, are this graph right here, the exponential growth, 
parent function for exponential growth, and then this one, the one for exponential decay. All right, notice that this is y equals e to the x, and this is y equals e to the negative x. Okay. So take a second and copy down those graphs. Of this thing was all real numbers. And we said the range was y is greater than 0. On this one over here, I think our graph looks something like, let's see, it got really close to 1, right? Notice these are, yeah, these are half, half a unit intervals. Um, so this is y equals 1. So we'd say domain, once again, it's all real numbers. But the range is y greater than 1. Notice that 1 is the same number as that number right there. What a coincidence. This is called the PERT formula. If you think back to when we first learned the compound interest formula, we could choose how often we compounded. We could compound every year, one time, one time a year. We could compound every month, that was 12 times a year. We could compound daily, that was 365 times a, a year. Uh, what if we compounded continuously? So not every second, not every half a second, but continuously. An infinite number of times in a year. Then that, that compound interest formula becomes this. This A equals P times E to the RT formula. Should we write down that description? I don't think you need to write the description down, but I'll definitely write the formula, and then I'll kind of point out what everything is here. T is time. R is the rate. P is the principal. And A is the amount in the account <laughs> after T years. The first thing we should do is notice that it's continuously compounded. So whenever you see compounded continuously, that's when you think the PERT formula. Now let's look at the information that we're given here. We're depositing $4,000. That's my principal. So P equals $4,000. All right, in the account that pays 6% annual interest. That's my rate. But remember, you would never put 6 for your rate. You would put 0 0.06 for your rate. Okay. What is the balance after one year? Well, that looks like T, right? T equals 1. Um, now, T will not always be 1. It could be 6 or 7 or 9 or 1 and a half. Um, so T will not necessarily be 1. So let's plug everything into this formula and see what, how much money we have after a year. All right, so A equals 4,000 times E raised to the point zero six times 1. Right? And that you should be able to put right into your calculator. 4,000 times e to the 0 0.06. And what do you get for a? <coughs> what did you say? 4,000? 4, 4,247.35. Okay, 4,247.35. So, first of all, that's how much money we have in our account after a year. You should always check and see if that makes sense. If you get a number like $80,000 and you started with $4,000, there's probably a mistake there. Or if you got like $6, you probably made a mistake somewhere. So always check your answer um, to make sure that it's reasonable. Okay, and that's it for this section. Can I move on and show you your homework assignment? All right, here's your assignment for section three. Try those. You've got plenty of time. You should be able to get most of them done uh, before you leave.